When I'm teaching students, I'm often asked what the best way to pass an exam is, so I thought it'd be helpful to give a few handy hints on how to deal with exam questions. Now, what I'm going to be focusing on is actuarial questions, and particularly the questions in the later exams, but a lot of what I'm going to say would be relevant to any exam, so hopefully you'll find it useful. So, what's the first hint? The first hint is read the question. Now, that might sound, sound kind of trite, but it's incredibly important. Um, it is quite hard work writing a question, so you don't put anything in there which isn't going to be relevant to the answer somehow. Um, take, for example, the preamble in a question. So, so most exams have two parts. So most exam questions have two parts. You've got this, this preamble at the start, which gives you a bit of background, and then you have the questions themselves. And the preamble is going to be things like, um, you are part of a small team working for a small company which has a large pension scheme. So all that information in there is going to be relevant somehow. It's not going to be there just because someone enjoys writing. Um, the fact that it's a small company, why might that be relevant? You know, does it mean you've got less in the way of resources? The fact that the pension scheme is large and the company is small, does that mean that um, it might be more of a financial drain? All of these adjectives, all of these bits of detail, they're there for a reason. It's not just trying to set a nice scene. It's about putting in information in the question which is then going to be relevant to the answer. So when you read that preamble, make sure that you pick out all of those adjectives, all of those individual points which are relevant to this particular scenario, because they are going to be relevant to the questions that you're answering. And that's a general point about when you're answering the questions as well. And don't give generic answers. If you've got a question about, say, um, outlining the risks for this company, make sure the risks that you're outlining are for this company. They, they pick up on those particular aspects that have, have been mentioned in the preamble, and you build on those when you're answering the question. Because if you're asked for, if you're asked to just outline, outline the lists, the, the risks, and all you do is just vomit out a list of risks that you've heard about onto paper, then that's not necessarily going to get you the marks, because you're just showing that you can remember a list of risks, not that you can see how these risks are relevant to the company in the question. So making sure that you recognise that relevance is also very important. Uh, so what other hints could there be? Um, quite an important one is making sure that you not only read the preamble, but you read the question itself, what's being asked. Um, so what do I mean by this? Any question starts with some sort of command word. Well, in actuarial exams, it starts the command word. In any other exams, there is going to be some sort of command word in there. Now, a command word is something like list, explain, describe, um, discuss, and all these demand different levels of detail. So uh, list means just that, put down just bland points. And this is usually going to be something where you've had to um, learn a particular list relative to some particular aspect of, of the course. And it's straightforward, you just, you just list them. Um, uh, discuss, if you just give a list and the question says discuss, you're not going to get all the marks. You might not even get any marks because discuss means look in more detail at what these particular um, things you've been asked to discuss mean. Um, explain, again, implies a bit more detail. And this all comes down to um, the, the different skills that you're trying to test in an exam. And th there are, in, ex in actual exams, there are three broad areas that we're trying to test. One is book work, one is application, one is higher order skills. So book work is you just learn it and you just chuck it out onto the page. It should be the easiest part, the easiest marks you can get. If it is just list three things that you should have learnt before, there shouldn't be any easier marks than that. You, you know exactly what you have to do. Now, I know that students actually don't necessarily like this, but I do think it's quite important, because if you, if you don't understand the bookwork, or rather if you don't, can't remember the bookwork, it's going to be really difficult for you to deal with the later questions where you're trying to apply the bookwork, or even um, use this bookwork for some completely different scenario. So applying the bookwork, application, this might be something like um, a question where you have to calculate something. So it might be that you're looking at um, copulas, for example. 
uh, which is a way of linking different sets of data together. Now, um, a bookwork question might ask you to um, explain the difference between two different types of copula. An application question might ask you to calculate a copula. So, so apply what you have learned to this particular scenario. Um, a higher order skill might be something like uh, looking at a particular scenario, having to choose a particular copula that will be relevant in that scenario. And the bulk of the marks tend to be around the application, but you get a big slug of marks for just knowing your book work, which you really should know because it's easy marks, and uh, quite a big slug for higher order skills as well. Now, I, I think application is a bit more difficult than book work because th there's more room for mistakes because you can't just chuck down what you know onto the page, you've actually got to go through some calculations or, or, or some, other, um, so, some other bit of work which makes it unique to this question. Uh, higher order skills, the, the, the higher order part, I mean that's the really difficult part, trying to um, see a completely new scenario that you haven't seen before and trying to work out how to um, apply something from the course somewhere to answer the question. I think that's pretty difficult. I think it's more difficult than just saying, I recognise that, they just want me to pick this bit out of the course and chuck it onto the page. That should be an easy win. So you know, another hint would be make sure you know your book works, so you're prepared for those easy questions. Those questions where it's five marks and you should be able to easily get five out of five. Um, what other hints could I give? Um, something which a lot of people fall down on is trying to give too much information. If you look through the past papers and the model solutions, you can see broadly how much detail is required for a particular mark level of question. So if you've got a 10 mark question, it might be you need to make 10 points with some sort of backup for why those points are relevant. And if that's the case, don't write 20 points or 30 points, hoping that that way you're bound to have covered all the base and bound to have got your 10 marks. Because if you do that, you've got less time to do the rest of the exam. And if you've run out of time and you haven't been able to do the last third of the paper, it doesn't matter that you've got full marks on that 10 mark question. You might still fail because you just haven't done enough of the paper. So it's very important to, to use your time wisely and not to over answer the questions. Also, don't make the same point twice. If you're running out of points and you're thinking, what if I make this point here, which is a bit like the first one, but worded slightly differently? Well, you know what? Examiners tend to have a marking schedule and they will go through and if they see the same point twice, they're not going to give twice the marks for it. You're only going to get the marks once. If you make the same mark twice, the same point twice, all you're doing is wasting time and leaving yourself less time for the later, um, for the later questions. So do make sure that you don't um, repeat yourself and you don't over answer questions. Um, and you know, again, this might seem like a trivial point, but make your answers as clear as possible. Make the marker's job as easy as possible. Now, this isn't because um, markers are going to dock you marks out of spite because they don't like the way you've written, but say you're trying to make 10 distinct points, and you make each point, you start each point on a separate line with plenty of space between them. So it's very easy for the marker to pick up those individual points and give you credit for them. It's much more difficult to mark just a single block of text where um, you've just carried on writing continuously from all of, from one point to the tenth point. It's difficult because when you're marking that and you're marking a large number of papers, trying to work out where one point ends and another one starts and if it's distinct or not can be quite difficult. So you might end up losing marks just because the examiner isn't able to pick out exactly what you've written. So that's um, a, a, a point which a lot of people fail on is, well not a lot of people fail, a lot of people lose marks on um, poor presentation of the results, making it more difficult than it needs to be for, for the marker, for the examiner. Um, what other points could I give? I mean those really are some of the, some of the really key points and it really is about reading the question and understanding what the question is asking you for and working out what hints essentially are being given in the question in the preamble and making sure that you answer those questions properly, that you do um, draw out all those points, that you, that you do exactly what the question says. Actually that reminds me of another point, always answer the question that is there, not the question that you wish 
would be there. So, you know, fairly um, trivial example. Say you get a question which asks you to talk about credit risk. And you say, oh, don't really know much about credit risk. I'll fill in some stuff about market risk because it's quite similar and, you know, I might get some credit for that. No, you won't, because the question is about credit risk. And if the question is about credit risk, the examiner wants to know about credit risk. His marking schedule will be about credit risk. There won't be anything on there for market risk. So even if you can only get half the points there through what you know of that relevant topic, settle for that, move on to the next question. Don't waste time writing stuff which the question isn't asking for. So hopefully that's given people something to think about and a, and a few extra hints on how you might get through the exam. And, and hopefully it's going to make um, my job as, a, as an examiner more easy when I get some nice papers which are only answering the question which has been asked, which are uh, set out nicely with gaps between the different points, which are um, not repeating points all the way through. And I'll have a happy team of um, examiners in the next session.